eternal Father. For the sake of the death and resurrection of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, So, dear brothers and sisters, today's reflection is very obvious. Temptation. Jesus was tempted. Adam and Eve were tempted. So, anybody can be tempted. And how dare are you? Um, let me try to leave some... Um, side attractions and face the main cause. Um, temptation. How does the devil tempt us? Okay. A woman got fed up with a husband. The husband was a drunk. The man was always getting drunk. And you know that when a man gets drunk, you know he's a menace. Difficult to live with such people. The woman had talked and talked, and there was no headache. So she decided to report the man to the parish priest. And the parish priest sent for the man, and the man came. And the priest tried to reason with the man, talk to him. Um, at a point, the man was combative. Everything the priest said, the man had an answer. The priest told him, it is no good. Alcohol is no good. Wine is no good. Stop drinking beer. And the man said to him, Father, if alcohol is not good, why did Jesus turn water into wine? So that was an argument for priests. Priests kept looking for way. Then eventually, the priest told him that, listen, the problem is not even drinking. The problem is getting drunk. So if you know you cannot take normal drink and be normal, stop drinking at all. So at that point, the man became sober, silent, and it's like the thing touched him. And then... He was silent for a while and then he looked up to the priest and the priest was like feeling like, oh God, thank you, thank you, at least you are not touching this man. And the man said, Father, it's not my fault too, it's the devil's fault. And Father said, yes, it's the devil's fault. The man said, yes. Said, well, Father said to him, whenever the devil comes and tempts you, say to him, get behind me, Satan. The man said, Father, that is where the problem is. Every time I say, get behind me, Satan, he will go behind me and then push me into the bar. And then I start drinking. Okay. Have you seen somebody committed an atrocity and when the person was there, he say, it is the devil. Have you not heard that before? Even you sometimes have given yourself that excuse. It is the devil. Now, does the devil push us? Does he push anybody? Eh? Some of you say, oh, quick wins. It's the devil. He pushed me. The devil does not push nobody. What the devil does is temptation. Temptation. Understand temptation with seduction. Enticement. Use the word seduction for temptation. The devil does not push you. The devil tempts you. Okay. So, now let's look at how the devil succeeds. So he does not succeed by pushing into the beer parlor if drinking is your problem. He does not succeed by pushing you. He succeeds by tempting you. So it's not the devil that pushes you. The devil only tempts you. So how does he succeed? I'm trying to look at how temptation happens and stuff like that. But we can begin that with asking the question, why did Jesus defeat the devil and Adam and Eve could not. Same temptation. Jesus did not fall. Adam and Eve failed. Why did they fall and Jesus did not fall? 
Let me tell you some things that are common with them. Number one, Jesus, Adam and Eve were created sinless. Remember? They were made in the image and likeness of God. When they were created, there was no sin. So they didn't have sin inhabiting in them then. They were sinless. Jesus was born sinless, conceived without sin. He was born sinless. First John 3, 5. He said, Jesus came to do away with sin and all of that. And in him, there was no sin. Jesus was sinless. So Adam and Eve were sinless. Jesus was sinless. Same thing. Jesus had human nature. Adam and Eve also had human nature. So why did they fall? Jesus did not fall. Because sometimes we blame it on nature. And I do agree that nature plays a role, but it's nature the problem. It's nature the problem. Is nature culpable? I think that's what we want to use, culpability. You kill somebody now, you go to court and you tell the judge, sorry, oh, it's uh, human nature. The judge will punish human nature. Who will the judge punish? I mean, who will the judge punish? You, the person. So there is a difference between personality and nature. All of us share the same human nature. But all of us have different personality. So, human nature tempts all of us. Subject. That's, the Bible says he was like us in all things, except what? Sin. In other words, the desires you were born with, the cravings, the propensities. You could also say, he could also be tempted. That's why the devil went to tempt him. In the flesh, you can be tempted. The only person that cannot be tempted is God. But this is now God in the flesh. So he's subject to what people in the flesh go through. Are you with me? Eh? So, nature. What you should... Your nature can never be different from another person's nature. It's your personality. Your nature cannot be different. No matter the color. The tribe. So, this that define your personality might be different but once it is nature all human beings will have the same nature so if somebody is doing what another person is not doing it is not a problem of nature it's a problem of what it's a problem of what personality ah, why did you slap your wife she talks too much but Mark's wife also talks too much why has Mark not slapped his wife it's not nature or you say, hey, Father, sorry, it's human nature. She talks too much and then my nature reacts. This man too has the same nature like you, but he doesn't slap. Let me tell you one more story. I hope this is the last story I will tell you today. The scorpion and the fish. They were friends. And the scorpion wanted to cross the river. He begged the fish. Fish say, I don't go carry you, you go stink me. He said, no, Nahaba. Oh, you are my friend. <coughs> Please just cross me over. After much hustling, the fish agreed came close to the bank, scorpion climbed, and the fish were sw was swimming. They were talking just close to the other bank. As he was about to drop all this, the scorpion stung the fish. And the fish was distraught and said, what is the meaning of this? I knew you would do this. That's why I told you I don't want to do this. And all that. the fish was really angry. And then the scorpion became contrite and said, I'm sorry, oh. I didn't know when I do it. It's in my nature. It's my nature to stink. Some people are thinking like the Scorpio. Your personality, that's why on the last day, God will not hear about nature. It's the person that he will be judging. Person. Everybody say person, person, person. So nature is a factor, but nature is not the reason. So I was trying to find out, so what is so these things came to my mind. Why the devil succeeded with Adam and Eve and did not succeed with Eve? And why the devil succeeds with us in temptation? These four factors. Number one, desire. Everybody say desire. desire. Number two, capacity. Everybody say capacity. Yes. Number three, opportunity. And the final one is reward. These are the things the devil uses to tempt us. 
And if you want to overcome temptation and overcome the devil's antics, you must study these things as it affects you and work on them. And the, the one that is very um, dominant for me here today is desire. You can never fall for what you have no desire for. Carry your bulletins. Take your bulletins. Go to that first reading. Go to the first reading. Let me show you something. That before the devil succeeded in having Adam and Eve to eat that forbidden fruit, he had to first of all create the desire. Or arouse the desire. Let's go to the first reading. Um, let's read the first reading. Everybody, keep reading. When I tell you to stop, you stop. Reading, one, to go. The Lord God formed man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground, the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, okay, hold on. And out of the ground, the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and the good and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden. And which other one? The tree of knowledge of good and evil. Okay. Jump to... Um, did God say you should not eat? He said, you shall not eat of any tree of the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruits of the trees of the garden. But God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, I want you to read from there, but the serpent said to the woman, I want to go. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was, and that it was a, and that the tree was to be, I right, hold on. Okay. Now this tree has always been in the garden. And Adam and Eve have been minding their business. They never saw that the tree was good, delightful, and desirable. When did they begin seeing the tree in this perspective? When the devil came and said something to them contrary to what God said. All the while they've been seeing the tree. It was not attractive. It was not desirable. Until the devil came and spoke to them. Now the tree became attractive. And the woman saw that it was what? Desirable and good. So what has the devil succeeded in doing? First thing is that he has created the desire for the tree. And he can create desire by lies or falsehood. It doesn't matter. He created a desire. Now the woman is desiring it. You can't fall for what you have no desire for. It's difficult to get somebody to fall for what he has no desire for. Something that is not coming from within. Something you have no craving for. Or something you have no appetite for. For instance, those who don't take beer. Somebody who does not drink beer here. He doesn't have the desire. The devil can never tempt the person with what? Drunkenness or beer. Or even if the person goes out in the company of his friends and they are drinking beer or champagne or the strongest this thing, will the person be moved? Eh? The person is chilling with uh, Amstel Mott or water or cook. If your friends are cruel, except they will say, Hey, bad man, I better carry this woman, go put up another table. He's spoiling our, our table. 
But for somebody who has already tested and desires beer, yeah. Once a friend said, "Nah, more we'll go drink." The first thing that comes to his mind, he will picture that you know those bubbles, <laughs> those tiny tiny bubbles, uh -huh. and stuff like that. Those tiny bubbles, either by sight or by imagination. If you know what he does to a man who likes beer. But you who, do, you who don't like beer, even if you see 10,000 of them, it does not do what? It does not make sense. So he has to put the desire. If you don't have the desire, you will hardly fall for it. And that is, this is one of the biggest seats of vulnerability to temptation. Unfortunately, Adam and Eve pass this innate desire to us. That's why the sin is called the original sin and the originating sin. Amen. 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 Point number one. Your biggest problem in sin and temptation is from you. Your ministry of internal affairs. You come from within. Desire. Desires are inside. It's either you acquired it or you were taught or you were born with it. But something must ignite it. Adam and Eve were seeing that tree moving all the time, passing. They ignored it. But the day the devil came and spoke to them about it and positioned their senses. So desire, you can acquire it through what you see or what you hear. Oh, there are some people that when you are with them, you begin to desire the things you have never desired before. And that's why 1 Corinthians 15 says, be careful. He says, bad company corrupts good moral. Your desire. James chapter 4, from verse 1, he says, where did all this war among you start? All this quibbling and all that. He says, the desires fighting inside you. Inside you. Matthew 15. Jesus said to the apostles when they were asking for more clarification, he said, Haven't you, don't you understand? He said, It's not what goes inside a man that makes him unclean, but what does what? What comes out of a man? He said, From the heart comes fornication, lust, anger, hatred, and stuff like that. That is from inside. The desire sits in the heart, it becomes a mind, and then some it becomes a habit. Your desire. So concentrate on yourself. That's why Jesus fasted. The 40 days fasting was not to acquire power to heal the sick, as some people would think. It's not fasting that gives you power to heal the sick. It's not fasting that gives you power to raise the dead or do this or that. No. The power to do all that came from the Holy Spirit. John chapter, I mean Luke chapter 4. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has what? Anointed me. Acts chapter 10. He said because God was with him and God anointed him. He went about doing it. Acts 10, 38. The power to heal the sick, to raise the dead came through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So why did he have to go and fast for 40 days and 40 nights? It is to do what? Tame the desires of the flesh. Mortification. First Corinthians chapter 9, St. Paul says, I subject my body to punishment. He calls it punishment. So that I will do what? I can control it. Because in Romans chapter 7, he said, The good I want to do, I do not do. But the evil I don't want to do, I do what? I see myself. Then he said, What is this? He said, There is sin living in me. Why do you think David said in Psalm 51, Create in me a clean heart, O God? Because if my heart is clean, my actions are are going to be clean. You, 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 you. Your ministry of internal affairs is our biggest problem in temptation. The desire. If you don't have the desire, you will hardly, hardly do it. So, be careful about those who help you to acquire desires you, de you don't have. There are some women who didn't know what uh, infidelity was until they came into the company of certain people. You didn't know what infidelity to your husband was. Whether it's sexual infidelity or, um, or what do you call it? Psychological infidelity or emotional infidelity. You didn't know what it was until you came into the company of some people. They sold the desire to you. They created the desire. They aroused the desire in you. 
and now you are drifting. There are some men here too. You didn't know how to hide anything from your wife before, and your life was better. Until certain men came and started giving you some gibberish. So, are you not the man of the house? How can you tell your wife everything? She will control you. She will control you. She will kill you. Some youth were introduced to drug, alcohol, uh, lust, fornication, orgy, uh, what is it called? Homosexuality. By association. Desire. That's why we pray always, create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Purify my heart. Purify my soul. May God purge us of all evil desires in the name of Jesus the Lord. Can I get a better amen? amen. And I, I really like you to pay attention to the desires of your heart. The devil cannot tempt you, first of all, without giving you the desire. And if you don't have the desire, he will not. He will waste his time. Tell somebody he will waste his time. He will waste his time. He will waste his time. Two, capacity. The devil cannot tempt you with what you don't, or the devil may tempt you, but what you don't have the capacity for, you cannot fall for it. It's not possible. You can't fall for it. Um, what am I going to use now? Listen. If a child, a five years old child, Samai, please come. You are very. Oh, come, 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 come. Samai, come now. Anger. Anger that leads to fights. If, um, if these two people meet now, this man insults this boy very well. They are alone. Will this guy get angry and retaliate? Eh? Will he get angry and beat this man? Will he be tempted to fight him? Why? Eh? He doesn't have the capacity. But if this guy insults this man very, very well, provocative, what do you think will happen? Why? Because I have the capacity. capacity. Thank you. He won't tempt you what you don't have capacity for because it will not work. So that's why you must check your strengths and your gifts. Your strengths, your gifts. Even your blessings. These are your capacities. Capacity also include um, choice, freedom to choose. Jesus had the power to change stones into bread. Devil cannot tempt me with that kind of temptation. In the grace, you know, he wastes his time now. I don't have the capacity to change stones into bread. Jesus could, and he tempted him with that. Your capacity. That's why anger is usually is usually the vice of able-bodied people and people with capacity. Tempting me now to commit murder, physical murder, is difficult for him. Because I do not have that capacity to ski somebody and stuff like that. Imagine, okay, a soldier who is standing under the sun with gun. You, you, I can meet somebody, a normal civilian now, and uh, we can insult ourselves. The worst thing that can happen is that we will do what? We will fight, Abby. But to insult a soldier with gun under the sun, what do you think would be the first temptation that will come to him? So what you don't have the capacity for? So the this thing here is to watch your capacities, your strengths, your strengths. They can become your Achilles heel. Your strengths. I don't even know whether some women are even responsible for why their husbands are not rich. 
Do you know there are many men who are still faithful to their wives now? Your husband is not um, a Casanova because he doesn't have the money. <laughs> oh, yes, he doesn't have the money. He doesn't have the capacity. The devil cannot tempt him to camp a woman in uh, Sokoto, camp another one in Lagos. Buy house for another one in uh, over. It's not possible now. Broke house man, where he get the money? <laughs> but a man who has all the wealth in the world and travels all the time. Today is in London. Next tomorrow is in New York. Another day is in Kano. The other day is in um, you know Wary and all of that. What do you think his temptation will be? His temptation will be infidelity. He has the capacity, and he can finance it. But if you are here, don't pray that your husband should be poor. The way I'm looking at some women. Your capacity. And that to every one of these, there is grace. For desire is self mortification For capacity is looking less on yourself. If you have, that's why you don't keep money for yourself. Send money as message. Use it. To have the less privilege. And it becomes your snare and your trap. And a man who travels all around, that would be his temptation. The devil, he will hardly tempt a man who lives with his wife in the estate. You will go to the same, the same office or the same. Oh, no wonder some men who are married in life, they're more sure that their wife is in the shop. In the house, both of you are going to shop together. You close, you come back. Your movement is from treadmill to we say back it and back. You can't have the same temptation like somebody who circulates. Amen. Amen. So watch your strength. If you are beautiful, the temptation to be vain, vanity, will be high. You are blessed with one special gift or endowment or the other. The temptation to be proud is high. So watch your strength. And then watch also your vulnerabilities. Your weaknesses too. For instance, hunger can be a weakness. When you are hungry, you can be tempted to do what? To steal. Jesus was hungry at that point in time. The third one there is um, opportunity. Also, yeah? You can have the desire and the capacity, but when the opportunity is not there, you may not commit it. And if the opportunity is denied you for a long time, the desire may do what? Fade away. For instance, those who have the habit of uh, masturbation. Have you seen them masturbating in public before? Eh? If the person were to live 20 years in public, like, do you think the person will masturbate? It will be very what, difficult. Why? The opportunity is not there. And sometimes opportunity self can create desires that you probably do not even know. They exist. David. What was this that the devil exploited in tempting David and Bathsheba? What was the, the, the biggest um, factor in his fall there was opportunity. The Bible says it was a time on the, uh, during the year when kings went on campaigns. That means they went to war. But David was where? In the palace. And so one day he was walking on top of the, his penthouse. All these people who are building penthouses, be very careful. He was walking on top of his uh, balcony. And he, behold, he looked and saw a pretty woman, Beth. Then the desire came. If he was at war, would he have seen that woman? No. So you need to deny yourself sometimes opportunities or avoid the. Whenever you go to conversion, the priest will say, avoid occasions of what? Of sin. Avoid occasions of sin. That's why there is wisdom in a man who, if you know you travel all the time, 
and your wife is free, go with what? Go with her. He will deny that opportunity. Parents, at the age of growth, your children need what? How do I mean? They need that fence. You don't give them license of freedom. Okay? You don't give them. If you are sending them to school outside you, make sure you are sending them to what? A boarding school where they are watched. A girl or a boy who has not been secondary school and is living alone by himself or by herself. You are increasing the opportunity for going wayward. If I even have my way, eh, even university students, all of them should leave. And they, I know that they say, Father, it doesn't matter, but at least you can control. I can tell you what opportunity has done. When, I was in the, when we were in the seminary, hmm, we were regulated like what? You were everything you did here inside the seminary one. But once you become a priest, let me use food. Your mind should not go somewhere. Let me use food. Haven't you noticed that some priests, two, three years after the ordination, from me, they will turn to Samaike who girl. <laughs> Have you not seen it? Eh? One year, two years. Why? In the seminar, you didn't have the opportunity to eat what you wanted. You only had the opportunity to eat what is good and necessary. But when you become father now, <laughs> even pounded egg you can eat. <laughs> you can wake up and tell your cook, I'm not eating pounded yam today. Pound egg for me, that's what I want to eat. The seminary world was protective. You didn't have the opportunity. So sometimes, if you must overcome temptation, you must learn to deny yourself certain opportunities that will make you vulnerable. The last one is um, reward or incentive or motivation. Oh, if you eat it, you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Ah, and the woman now saw that it was desirable. And she took it and ate and gave to her husband. Okay. Before we used to think that Adam was somewhere, Abby, good man, and he go work. You know, some, before, before, it took me time. It was just like four or five years I discovered. Before I used to think that, hey, Adam was a very good man. He don't go work. He don't go work. Then when he came back, the woman gave him the fruit. He didn't uh, know. That was what some of us were thinking. My friend. Adam was sitting down there butt naked when all those things were happening. He was sitting next to his wife. Read New Jerusalem Bible translation. You say, and she gave some to the husband or to the man who was sitting by her side. That means all the way that Eve was talking with, uh, with um, serpent, the devil. Do you know that Adam was there? He didn't even say anything. When you are looking for a mumu man, the first mumu man God created was the first man he created. He was there. And that made me to even, I'm not even suspecting Adam. I am suspecting him. It's like that dude has been eyeing that tree, but he didn't know, he didn't have the courage. He didn't have the courage. So now when it looks like somebody is not doing the job for him, he just gave up. Immediately Eve gave him. Ah, oh, he didn't even say it. Did you you remember that God said we did not we should not eat it? You know, when somebody is that's why I say opportunity. Do you understand? Maybe he has even been looking for opportunity. Or he didn't have you know sometimes some people will have the tendency to do something, but they don't have the courage to do it and stuff like that. They're waiting for somebody. Oh guy, you like alcohol, but you are looking for someone who will like, oh, you see me who dragged us, let us go and stuff like that. Guy was sitting down there. He has been eyeing that tree. He was there. So the devil told them, this is what is going to happen. Now they ate it. Did they become like God? First of all, it is not true that you be like God. That's why you should know the word of God. I'm coming to teach, finish with how Jesus overcame the devil. He said, you will be like God. That is lie number one. We are already like God. Made in the image and likeness of God. So what do you mean? You see, 
Let me just add it without it. Part of the problem of Adam and Eve is that they did not interrogate the devil. They were swallowing hook, line, and sinker everything he was saying. And you cannot interrogate the devil if you are ignorant of the word of God. Jesus interrogated him. Everything he said, Jesus countered with the word of God. You can't interrogate the devil if you don't know the word of God. You will be like God. But we are already like God. So what are you talking about? If they had asked him that question, he may have started rambling. So what do you mean? We, are, we were made in his image and likeness. He gave us dominion over all this. So what do you mean we are going to be like him? They didn't interrogate. Knowing good and evil, you will be like God. Okay, now they have eaten it. How much of God did they become like? Reward. The reward that every sin promises you is not what it is. You will never get either that satisfaction or that good thing in quotes. Sin is like advertisement. It exaggerates what it purports to offer. Um, how many of you have, you watch Living in Bondage Part 1? Eh? If I forget everything in that movie, there is one line I will never forget. When he eye don't clear, Andy now said in Igbo language, he said, Manapolo, Akwata Sikora me forth. You remember that one? He said, Paul did not explain these things to me. He didn't tell me the implication of making this money. That I was going to lose my wife. I will not even have peace to eat the money. The money will not bring me that thing I thought it was going to bring to me. That's the reward that the devil gives you, the offer it gives to you, that you have to interrogate. It will never come as it purports. It's like advertisement, like I said. No, one man died and went. I, I may be telling you all these stories later, so don't worry. And Peter took him to heaven. And they showed him heaven. They saw people walking, fetching water, grinding this, hoeing, weeding, and all that. Hi. The man said, they walk in heaven. He said, yes. He said, show me hell. Peter took him to hell and showed him hell. In hell, oh, party, after party, champagne, dancing, music everywhere. People were just laughing and all that. The man said, Peter, you can go back. This is where I want to be. Peter said, this is where I want to just go. Peter said, okay, no problem, bye-bye. And the man entered. Immediately he entered. He saw himself falling Deep, 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 until he landed inside fire. Then he started shouting. He said, no, this is not what I saw. This is not what I saw. This is not what I saw. The devil said to him, shut up. What you saw was our advertisement section. This is the right hand. This is the right place. What did they tell you that drug was going to do for you? Indian hemp. They said it's going to make you high. Higher than the most high. That when you begin to take uh, Igbo or this, is going to make you high, make you strong. Strong for what? We don't interrogate. We don't ask questions. Now, nah, test this one. This, okay, what is it going to make me? Oh, it's going to make you high. Okay, I will be high. How? My height will increase. Or I will not be walking on the air so that when I want to go to town, I don't have to enter Uber. I can walk on the air. Interrogate high. What do you mean high? We don't interrogate. You take it and you become high. But after the high comes what? No, you, don't, you become so low that you will not desire that high. I will tell you to make you higher again. And you keep taking it and it keeps making you high, but you are not higher than anything. Every sin that entices you with a reward. In Nigeria, they go say Naskam. Everybody say Naskam, Naskam. Let me use alcohol again. One, two bottles of beer. From a nutritional perspective, they say that um, a bottle of beer or so is healthy. 
Because beer is made with, um, what do you call it? Is it wheat? Eh? And some other, this thing. So you can derive, um, it has fiber and stuff like that. Okay? You take one or two. Why do you want to take 24 bottles? Why do you want to take 24 bottles? What reward are you going to get from 24 bottles? You'll be high. You know, we don't interrogate. These are questions each and every one of us find what is your habit, what is your sinful habit, what is your indulgence. Ask yourself. If you're a womanizer, you ask yourself as a man. Solomon, who had 1,000, what did he make him? What did he make him? Because if we don't interrogate these things, we, you easily be falling for them. But when you begin to interrogate, when I told you about MMM, part of the reason people fell for that is because they did not ask questions, they did not interrogate. Oh, you will be like God, but I am already like God. So what do you mean I will be like God? Turn these stones into bread. Interrogation. Man does not live on bread alone but on everywhere that comes from the mouth of God. Yeah, bread is necessary, but I don't need it. Interrogate. Hey, don't give your wife your... Don't let her know your... your I know password. More no good password. Self. Leave password alone. I bet leave your husband for <laughs> Don't let him know your investments, your businesses, and stuff like that. If you die, who will take care of your children? Interrogate. 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 So, the reward that everything promises us, it doesn't come like that. It's an exaggeration of something that can never take us anywhere. Anything. It's an exaggeration of something that can never take us anywhere. We call it anything. Whether it's um, indulgence or material things or food or power or fame. All these men who are running after power and all that. After that, what next? Okay, finally, the temptation of Jesus. We will not finish it today. We would continue on second, I mean, third Friday, where you can also ask questions. But listen, don't take it literally. I can imagine some of you are imagining that the devil came to Jesus. How did he come to Jesus? As a man? He came to Adam and Eve in form of what? Snake. What form did he come to Jesus? Some of us will be imagining him as a man, and maybe even came with two horns and long tail. And say he took Jesus. So imagine that he, he just carried Jesus. Took him up and stuff like that. No, there is a way of looking at that um, uh, temptation. I will tell you that on Friday. And then um, you can also ask me. But what I want to do finally is to interpret that temptation of Jesus has a meaning. Turning stones into bread has a deeper meaning. If not, what is wrong in turning stone into bread? Is there anything wrong with it? Eh? No, there's nothing wrong with it. It's not, any, it's not breaking any commandment. If Jesus turned the stones into bread, is he breaking any commandment? No. But what does it mean? It has a meaning. Turning stone into bread, two meanings I'm taking out from to you this morning and we close this. Number one is the temptation to use your power or your grace selfishly for yourself. Jesus had to resist that. 
Like I told you, the devil cannot empty for something I have no capacity for. Jesus knew he was gifted. He had the power to do anything. Jesus had the power to do anything. So this is the temptation to use your power anyhow to suit your fancy or to just uh, indulge yourself. Jesus avoided that. That's what the devil is trying to make Jesus. That these powers I have, they are not for me. Listen what he said. He said in Luke chapter 4, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to do what? To bring good news to the poor. Liberty to captives. Open the eyes of the blind. To tell those who are in prison that they are prisoners no more. And to announce to the poor and give them the good news and stuff like that. Did you hear anywhere Jesus made reference to himself? No. So my powers, my capacities is not for doing things that please me. We must resist that temptation. Many churches and ministries and men of God are falling for that temptation. Power for its sake. To dazzle people. To dazzle people. That's number one. Then number two, the meaning of that temptation was change stones into bread. In other words, give them bread and they will follow you. These people you are coming to save, solve all their earthly problems. Give them what they want, what they need at any point in time, and they will do what? They will follow you. Big temptation for Jesus. Very big. You, you will not understand. Listen, the devil is tempting you against your mission. Jesus' mission was salvation. So the devil is telling me, if you want to save these people, the devil knew that the cross was the way chosen by God for salvation. So the devil is suggesting to Jesus another means of making this salvation happen. The same thing indeed in, uh, in the garden. God has already made you in his image and likeness. But the devil is not giving you another way to become like God. Not the way that God has set for you. So for Jesus, the cross is the means to our salvation. The devil knew it was the cross he was going to go through. So what the devil is trying to do here is, no, you don't need to do that. Just give them bread. Do spectacular things. And they will follow you. And the devil was right. Sorry, I'm finishing now. John chapter 6. When he multiplied loaves into, uh, multiplied loaves and fed 5,000, what happened? Do you remember that the Bible said they were not looking for Jesus? Eh? Everybody now, both those who were there and those who were not there, they were not looking. They were not the ones looking for Jesus. And when they found him, what did they say? They said, where have you been? We have been looking for you. Where have you been? What did Jesus say to them? He said, you're not looking for me because you saw the sign, but because you had more than enough to eat. Then he now started taking them into the Eucharist. He said, walk for food that do not perish. And, all that. and then that conversation about the Holy Eucharist, you must eat my flesh. And all that. When he finished eating them about the Holy Eucharist, what happened? What happened? They did what? I want to hear you now. What happened at the end? When it became clear, Jesus was telling them that why I multiplied loaves for you was to point you to a higher thing that you need, which is the Holy Eucharist. So now that Jesus has taught them about the Holy Eucharist, the sacrament of his body and blood, what happened? They left all of them. In other words, what they wanted was give us more. Who wouldn't want to go to a place where you will not work and food, fish and bread? Have you combined fish and bread before? On a top? Who wouldn't want to follow somebody who will just command fish and bread? And it will come. I don't have any problem anymore. All I need to do is to just follow you. I'm eating fish and bread. He said, all of them left. So they were following because of the fish and the bread. And you think men and women of these days, men and women of God don't know it? Why do you think they advertise miracles? Check flyers of church programs. See what they dangle before you. Jesus would never advertise miracles for you, but miracles will happen if God chooses to when you come to listen to the word of God. But see what churches and ministries do. It is advertised in your face. Are you looking for the fruit of the womb? Come. Are you looking for a life partner? Come. Are you looking for healing? Come. This man of God is on fire. God has packaged three days for 
power-packed program for you. Come and go. Do. The devil that has been fighting you, come. We are going to take care of him and all of that. That is advertisement. That is preaching Christ by what? By um, bribe. And it's working. How will it not work? It worked in Jesus' time. People will follow you. They will follow you. So the devil knew. Jesus said, man does not live by bread alone, but by what? Every word that comes from the mouth of God. Interrogate the devil. I have been telling people, interrogate what you hear. Interrogate. Interrogate. By speaking the word of God to the devil, Jesus was interrogating the devil's proposal. Interrogate the devil's proposition. Don't accept it. Don't accept hook, line, and sinker what you hear from him. Interrogate it. And for you to, be, to do that, you must know the word. And you know the shocking thing? Even the devil knows the Bible. The devil knows the Bible. How much more you? Hey! The devil can quote the Bible. That means he might read the Bible. Jesus of Nazareth. And some Christians don't even read the Bible. The devil reads the Bible. The devil says, oh, okay, this man don't come this level. Then the next temptation, he says, throw yourself down for it is written. The devil just quoted Psalm 91. That's Psalm 91 that many of you like. He just quoted it to Jesus. For he will give his angels charge. Help me tell you about devil, they read the Bible too. Help me tell you about devil, they read the Bible. Lord. How about you? How about you? How about you? He just got there sometime 91. He said, throw yourself down. So, I am still connecting. There is the Luciferian news or the Luciferian gospel. There are many of us are falling for we don't know. The Luciferian gospel uses the Bible to justify what men have concocted and are teaching. First of all, he said, throw yourself down. Then he used the scripture to back it up. So, Knowing the scripture, memorizing the scripture is important, but key, key to the scripture is what? Interpretation. Everybody say interpretation. Have I not warned you before to be careful about whose interpretation of scripture you are listening to? Even the devil can use the Bible to make you do what he wants. So quoting the Bible alone is not enough. And the same thing the devil, they learned it from the devil. Those who use scripture to deceive, they learned it from the devil. He lifted that scripture out of context. Psalm 91 is talking about God's protection. Abby, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High and abides in the shelter of the Almighty says to the Lord, my refuge. That is the psalm of somebody who is praying for God's protection. It is not the psalm of somebody who wants to put God to the test by jumping off to know whether God will save you, which is what many people are doing. So you see how the devil lifted that psalm out of its context. When they follow me, so he lifted the psalm, a portion of it, out of it, to suit what he already had made his mind up. That is how fake churches and pastors do. And once some of us, once somebody quotes the Bible for you, that person is already a man of God. They lift it out of context. Ha! Jump! For it is written. Many of you would have jumped. Oh, man of God said, and he quoted the scripture. Jump. But how can you know how to interrogate if you don't know the scripture? You have to know the scripture yourself. Be conversant with it. Meditate on it. Pray with it. And then, from the interpretation of the church and interpretation of the Holy Spirit on a personal level, you will know when somebody is trying to manipulate you with Bible and when somebody is not manipulating with Bible. Like some people will say, the woman is subject to the man. Scripture says it. Therefore, for some men, the woman is subject to the man means you are a zombie. Anything I say you do, you must. Have you noticed that some men, when their wife challenges their logic sometimes, you tell your wife, do this and that, and she says, but this is not right. Say, the Bible says the woman should do what? Obey the husband. Is that what the Bible means? That the woman should do anything and everything the man wants. Does the Bible say the woman should no longer use her brain? Interpretation. 
But let's leave it at there. So Jesus overcame the devil because he interrogated. So two things that gave Jesus triumph. Number one, the desire. He killed it through mortification. We must mortify. That's what this Lenten season is all about. Fasting, abstinence, almsgiving, spending more time in prayer. It helps to, you know, reduce the influence of the flesh. Then, interrogation of the devil's ideas. The devil's ideas with the word of God. With the word of God. Whatever I see, you should know the word of God. If it is fear, he's coming with the Bible. He said, the Lord is my light and my help. Whom shall I fear? He buffets you with, uh, um, um, with, uh, with um, any kind of sin. You look for the biblical passage that addresses it and puts it there. And then at the end, there is a time that it will come. You say to the devil, get behind me. Be gone. Jesus, Jesus never said, get behind me. Jesus said, be gone. So at, so at the time it will reach, you will do what? You will tell the devil, I command you do what? Go away, go away, go away. I don't want you anymore. Don't keep him too long in the company. Discharge yourself or discharge him so that you don't fall for him. So my dear brothers, my dear sisters, the Lord Jesus triumphed where our first parents failed. May the victory of the Lord be your own victory. I say may the victory of the Lord be your own victory. This year, by the grace of God, we will not fall into the traps of the evil one. We will not fall into the traps of the evil one. We will not fall into his power or dominion. We will not fall into his seduction. By the word of God and by the grace of God and by the power in the name of Jesus, we shall come out victorious over the enemy and all his agents through Christ our Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, he will.